Ahoy! Today, we will learn about phase diagrams, which are a map of a substance's states of matter. Did you know you are currently sitting atop a phase diagram yourself? The water and carbon dioxide in your body are at the coordinates of one atmosphere and 37 degrees Celsius. If either of those values is changed past a phase boundary, then a phase change will occur. In this lesson, we'll learn to read a phase diagram to determine which state a substance is in given its temperature and pressure. We'll also learn to define four important points on the phase diagram. Before we jump into the phase diagram, let's take a peek at the axes. The left axis is always pressure, and the bottom axis is always temperature. Try to guess which phase corresponds to these locations. In the upper left, we have high pressure and low temperature. In the lower right, we have low pressure and high temperature. When we bring in the full phase diagram, we see that the bottom right holds the gas phase, which makes sense because if we heat something to a high enough temperature, it will vaporize. The upper left contains the solid phase, which also makes sense since cooling a substance down will eventually cause it to freeze. In the middle, we see our magical third phase, the liquid, which exists in between the solid and gas phases, but only at certain temperatures and pressures. If we know the temperature and pressure of the substance for the phase diagram, we can determine its phase by locating the coordinates. These lines on the phase diagram represent phase boundaries. When temperature or pressure are changed such that the coordinates pass over one of these lines, the indicated phase change occurs. Do you remember this practice problem from lesson 11.4? We had to calculate the energy involved as a very cold ice cube is heated up to very hot steam, going through two phase changes. Let's map this exact pathway on the phase diagram for water. Here we have the phase diagram of water. Terrestrial earthlings spend most of their lives at a pressure of around one atmosphere, which means we live on the horizontal dashed line. Please follow along as we trace water's path from negative 30 degrees to 150 degrees. Since we're not changing any pressure, as we heat our very cold ice, we walk east along our phase diagram until we get to the first solid line representing a phase change. The phase change from solid to liquid is called melting. We'll stay right at this point until all the ice has melted into liquid water. After which, continued heating increases the temperature taking us further east until we reach the next solid line, which represents boiling. We'll stay here until all of the liquid water is turned into vapor, at which point we continue our walk eastward until we hit our end point 150 degrees. Hopefully you can see how the strange shape of the heating curve on the bottom right relates to the phase diagram map. We'll continue to use water's phase diagram in the next slides. Every substance has two unique points on its phase diagram. The first is the triple point, which appears at the intersection of the solid, liquid, and gas phases. At the triple point, all three phases can coexist. For water, this occurs at 0 0.006 atmospheres and 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. This beaker has those exact conditions, allowing ice water to boil. Pretty incredible. But perhaps the spookiest point on the phase diagram is the critical point. The critical point marks the end of the gas and liquid phases as we know them. Beyond the critical point, there is no distinction between gas and liquid. Instead, we have a strange phase called the supercritical fluid. 
This fluid fills its container like a gas, but the molecules are still very close together and interact like a liquid. Strange and wonderful things can happen in supercritical fluids, and they're often useful to engineers who want to achieve or avoid liquefaction. Professor Carroll at Union makes extremely lightweight aerogels. To do so, she sends her reactants into a supercritical fluid to avoid the formation of a liquid gas phase boundary. Another remarkable fact about water is that water is less dense as a solid. This is rare. In most substances, the solid phase is more dense than the liquid phase. We can observe this on water's phase diagram because the line between solid and liquid has a negative slope. That is, it tilts to the upper left. In fact, it is this principle that makes ice skating possible. When you skate on ice's surface, the skate blades exert a high pressure on the surface of the ice. What happens as we increase pressure on solid water? The water melts. This thin layer of liquid water lets you slide and pirouette with ease on ice. Time to practice. Use the phase diagram of carbon dioxide to answer these questions. To answer the first two questions, we just need to find our coordinates on the map. Standard temperature and pressure is zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. This is indicated by the green arrow with a one next to it. CO2 is in the gas phase. At 30 degrees and 73 atmospheres, CO2 is slightly colder than its critical point, indicated by the blue arrow. This is a liquid. For question number three, we need to track the path of CO2 as it moves from low pressure to high pressure, indicated by the red arrow. First, it passes through the gas liquid phase boundary, meaning CO2 will condense. Next, it passes through the liquid solid phase boundary, meaning CO2 will freeze. Question four is similar to question five, but the CO2 starts a bit colder. As we increase the pressure, it only goes through one phase boundary, the gas solid. This is called deposition. Lastly, to determine whether the liquid or solid is denser, look at the slope of the liquid solid phase boundary. I like to imagine compressing the liquid, which would indicate a line upward from the liquid phase. You can see that it would eventually pass over the solid liquid phase boundary and solidify or freeze. Therefore, solid CO2 is denser than liquid. <laughs> 